The compatibility issues that we have with, say, 802.11b and g on the same network are not the only coexistence issues that you're going to deal with. You're also going to see problems when you try and mix a and n or uh, g and n. So let's say I have a G client and I have an N client. When the access point recognizes that we have a G client on the network, it is then going to have to ensure that the G clients can hear the noise that's out there, uh, even though that's being transmitted using a different set of modulation techniques that are available to communicate with N. So the way that it does that is by ensuring that the frame is sent at the legacy speed, meaning the legacy modulation mechanisms, when communicating between the access point and N. So the G will be able to say, ah, I see, here's the duration of the frame, I know how long to wait. Meanwhile, the rest of the frame is sent at 802.11n speed and works its way in there. So they're both using OFDM, so that's not a problem. It's really the advanced modulation techniques that would create interoperability issues. This is how it's resolved. But we still have issues. Uh, let's say you had 802.11a and 802.11n. 802.11n allows for double bandwidth situations where it combines 36 and 40 for a single aggregate channel, where A, of course, doesn't. It can only use a 20 megahertz channel. Pick one, right? Well, a client here using 802.11n uh, would recognize, okay, 40 is busy, and it would reduce itself to only communicating on channel 36 because it hears the noise of access point 40. So it recognizes, oh, I can't use that top end of the signal. However, the other access point cannot recognize that. It's going to transmit on 36 and 40, and so we can have collisions occurring. So uh, these type of environments can be really detrimental to the way that we support this. And uh, again, without something like Cisco's uh, Radio Resource Management, RRM, you really don't have any way to resolve this other than to design your network so that this doesn't happen. So some real issues, some real problems that can happen because maintaining legacy support in this case, for an 802.11a access point.